you, folks. We uh, are going to conclude today the 29th letter. A letter that taught us the concept of... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, that concept uh, taught us... One second. <laughs> Uh, see how your mind can just uh, go astray in a moment uh, where we learned about reincarnation well we asked some questions at the beginning a woman of valor is the crown of her husband first of all what does that mean why is she, she her own crown why is she her husband's crown why doesn't he crown her what does that mean I mean listen should there not be equality? Furthermore, um, we explain what a crown is. A crown is a metaphor for Jewish law. And learning Jewish law, get a share in the world to come. Why? Only Jewish laws that say about that. How about our Tanya that we're learning? Or other things. Learning uh, Chumash. Yeah. Learning the weekly Torah portion doesn't say about that. Those are some of the questions we had in the beginning. So, uh, uh, first, uh, as a background, we need to appreciate that everything in the world ultimately is about a union of the male and the female aspects of the divine. And that is on the creative level. That's on the um, um, in level of intelligence, divine intelligence. There needs to be a union between the male and the female aspects of the divine on all, all levels, which parenthetically, um, if you're just one or the, you know, if you're just one or two of the same, missing the whole point of creation. Just as in crea the creative force is the male parts of the divine, which is the six divine emotions, which is male. Um, this is not today's class. I'm just giving some background. And we've studied this in the past. And the female aspect of the divine in the creative process is malchus, is uh, kingship, royalty. A union between the two begets. That's what a union does. It begets something. As it is in the physical, it begets, you know, male and female beget a child. No other kind of, no other, there's no other kind of union because there's no other kind of begetting. Now, um, it begets a, a, a physical child, but there's also spiritual aspects in, in the physical union between husband and wife. But uh, again, that's not for the moment. The, the, the idea and the understanding to have is that this union creates something that wouldn't be there otherwise. So, what is male? What is female? So, we've, again, we've learned this idea many times over. Uh, male, as it is metaphorically, <laughs> metaphorically in the human condition. And what is the human condition? The male has a seed, the semen, that in that semen is the entire potential of the fetus. 248 limbs, 365 sinews, which represent 613 parts of the soul um, and of the physical makeup of the individual. But it's only brought out into revelation in a revealed manner into reality by the feminine aspect, by, by the woman. By the mother. By the mother who, you know, through nine months of gestation, um, develops the, uh, the, the seed and um, creates, begets the child. So that's the way it is down here. And the only reason it's down here this way because that's the way it is in the divine. So in the creative process, as we just mentioned, it's the six um, emotive attributes, masculine, with the 
with Malchus feminine that unite, have a union, and therefore create the world of Bria. This is in the world of Atzis, create the world of Bria, create the then and from the world of Bria, the things in Bria, and then in the world of Yitzira and Siya, and then finally this physical world, and so on. So that's the way it is in the creative process. That's the way it is in the human condition. Um, the only way you can beget, you know, the most the dearest thing is, you know, life. A child is through the union of male and female. So that's the way it also it is when we speak about God's divine wisdom, his Torah. Now, his will, supernal will, is vested in 613 commandments. And where are those commandments? How do we know there's 613? Because in the five books of Moses, that's where they are. They're written there in Chumash. And that's what makes them biblical commandments. Aside from, you know, seven um, rabbinic laws and there's customs that become law and, and, and so on. I'm not going to go into that. But the point is that God's will is expressed in the written word. But how is it expressed there? It's there covered, secreted. It's concealed. It only becomes manifest in the Oral Torah. Oral Torah meaning the Talmud, Jewish law, and the like. So, for example, the Alter Rebbe gives tefillin, right? Phylacteries, where it says in the Torah very clearly, we say it in the Shema, twice a day. Loosely translated, and they shall bind for a sign on your hand, and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes. Well, what is that? that? That's very obscure. How are you supposed to do that mitzvah? It's a command to do this. Am I supposed to take a piece of string and do that? Am I taking uh, something hanging on my forehead over here? How do I know? Well, it's concealed in the written word. It's seminal. It's the seed. But it needs to be elongated. It, it, it needs to be um, further... Uh, um, just stated, so to speak, in the oral Torah, where it teaches us that you need to have a single box on your hand, and your hand doesn't mean your hand, your hand means your arm, and, the, and four boxes on your head. Well, four compartments, and right, on your head. And it needs to be prepared by leather, and the squares, and it have to be square boxes, and it has to be tied in a certain manner. It needs to be black, not green. You know, the world's going green, but the villains stay black. And um, this is all stated in the oral Torah. Right? Um, further, the Alter Rebbe gives another instance of uh, Shabbos. Right? The laws of Shabbos, and you shall do no work. And what's work? Are you allowed to carry heavy stones in your home from, you know, from uh, from your, um, <clears throat> sorry, heavy stones from one corner of the room to another room in your home. Well, probably not a good idea. But biblically, yeah, you could. Because that's not the f definition of malacha, of work. Where do we know what the definition of that is? And how do we know uh, what the categories of work are? Well, that's the oral tradition. teaches us 39 uh, different areas um, that are called work in the oral uh, tradition teaches us and elaborates and gives us that. So what do we have over here? The oral Torah is called as King Solomon called it and do not cast off the teaching of your mother. Who's your mother? And the mother is the one who elaborates on, or uh, develops the seminal teaching, which is your mother's, your, the Torah, the, in, figuratively, metaphorically speaking, is the oral Torah. And who is the father then? The father is the written word, which is 
seminal, and therefore it's concealed, just as in the, the fetus is completely found in the seed of the father, but in a concealed, hidden way. Right? The mother's developing it. The mother is developing it. So, heed the, my son the, and the admonitions of your father. That's Chochmah. So we have here Chochmah and Bina. The two have to come together. In the divine they do. And that is, Chochmah is the written word. Bina is the um, oral teachings that elongates. Just as Chochmah is the flash of an idea in our head. Bina is the development. Bina to build. The woman builds the child, so to speak. Right? Develops the child. So likewise, um, in Torah, in the divine realm, Bina is a development, and that is a feminine quality. So now we can understand the phrase, a woman of valor is the crown of her husband. She's not her own crown. Because first of all, everything's about a union. It's coming together two opposites that need to unite and to complement, shall we say, each other or to bring out, you know. So what is the woman? How is she the crown of her husband? Well, there's in a simple sense, but actually King Solomon's phrase is meant to be on the metaphoric sense, first and foremost. And that means the woman, the oral Torah, is the crown. Crown is over the head, over the intelligence. So it represents that which is beyond intelligence. What's beyond intelligence? Your will. And in the metaphor, the supernal will of God. So the woman, the feminine aspect of Torah, the oral tradition, is the crown meaning the divine will of God that crowns the man, the written word, expresses the written word, develops the written word, reveals the written word, is what it does. And gives birth. Gives birth. Birth, meaning, is, again, developing that which is there in potential, but it's giving complete birth to it, to the teachings. And again, going back to what we said in the beginning, the written word is concealed. It tells us to keep Shabbos, don't do malacha, don't do work. It tells us to put on tefillin. And from the words themselves, we, would, um, we, could, we could define it almost any way we want. <laughs> That's why you need both um, in order to have the development and the understanding. And with this, then we can understand <clears throat> as to, give, to give birth, it says to raise to many legions because um, you're giving birth, you know, from one verse in the Torah about tefillin, for example, gives rise, gives birth, produces in the oral Torah hundreds, if not thousands, of laws in the laws on how to fulfill the mitzvah of tefillin. How to fulfill the law of tefillin. So, with this then we can understand why the Torah refers specifically to halachis, to Jewish law, that it gives you a share in the world to come. Because Jewish law is the crown of the supernal will of God because it reveals Jewish law in the Talmud, in, in um, the source, uh, code of Jewish law. The Alter Rebbe himself wrote uh, code of Jewish law. It um, reveals what God wants from us and how to do what we need to do in this world, right? So it, it is the supernal will, it is that crown that is exceedingly more sublime than wisdom, just as the crown is on top of the head. So it's greater. 
right? Therefore, the halachas refer to the crown, the crown of Torah, because they reveal the supernal will of God. If we were learning only the Torah portion of the week, it's great. He learned a lot of lessons in life, but how to fulfill the 613 divine commandments, the will of God, um, you know, you would know without studying that part of the Torah. Therefore, whoever studies specifically halacha, Jewish law, is assured a share in the world to come. Because you invest your nefesh, ruach, and neshama, your very soul in the supernal will of God, and that creates a garment for the soul in the world to come that are the mitzvahs that we fulfill. And uh, if you don't know how to do a mitzvah, then you won't get that garment for the mitzvah. And therefore, your soul has to come back here and be reincarnated, as we spoke in the beginning, right? Um, but if you learn the law, and therefore you know how to fulfill the mitzvah, through fulfilling the mitzvah, you create that garment. Um, and therefore, ultimately, um, um, invest your soul in that garment that becomes now a garment that allows your soul to... Um, have a share in the world to come because then you'll be able to you'll be able because the garment remember is a protective um, it, you know one of the things the garment does is protect us from the elements well the elements in the time to come are going to be godly very powerful godly illumination and that we will be able to withstand that godly illumination whereas by the giving the Torah, we weren't able to. Our soul took flight. It was God's presence and his uh, revelation in Mount Sinai was too great. But in the world to come, we'll be able to. We'll be able to withstand it. Why? Because we did the mitzvah. We did the mitzvah, so we create a garment that will give us the protective gear, as it were, the protective gear that we can... Um, uh, we can... Uh, be recep a, 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 recep a recipient, a receptacle for the divine illumination of God. But how are you going to make that garment? Well, you need to know the law itself. So you need to study halacha, Jewish law, so you know how to fulfill the commandments that God wants from us. So that ties everything in beautifully. And with that, we conclude the 29th letter. Amazing. As always, the Alter Rebbe. <laughs> Folks, I don't know if you're getting a feeling over here that I am. And I've been teaching this for online now for over a dozen years. Daily. It doesn't get dry. It doesn't get boring. It doesn't um, get stale. It's new. And every day... A new insight. Every day we have a new insight that we didn't have the day before. Or the week before. Or the month before. I don't know about you folks. But that uh, blows me away. <laughs> that blows me away. All right. Um, George and Vav Yud and Denise... Your broadcast keeps on interrupting. E. I hope that didn't happen. Deborah says it was very good. Maybe just refresh. And Mindy, yes, that's intimacy. Exactly. Uh, TJ from Australia. Michael from Athens. Okay. Mindy, begets is, I'm not certain what you're saying over here, so that makes you husband and wife, not a piece of paper, right? No, well, it's not a piece of paper that makes you husband and wife. It is chupa v'kedushin, is um, witnesses that, uh, see, you know, create the, um, the bond of two halves of one soul that come together under the chupa, in, from Jewish perspective. So it's not the piece of paper, it's the fact 
of what occurs under the chuppah. Uh, I'm, I'm, but I'm not clear on what you're saying. All right, good morning. Uh, Maeve, good evening. Erica. Oh. Okay, I'm hearing about someone else who also has, had a problem, Erica. Uh, Rachel. Thank you, Tarek. Um, thank you, John. Ella, good morning. Sina. Gabriella. Uh, Corona, <laughs> thank you, Gabriella. <laughs> Means crown, yeah. Yeah, and it's feminine. <laughs> yes, Rachel. Uh, yeah. Very good. Uh, Irma, Michael Zata, from Poland, Angelina, yes, thank you for sharing that, Elaine, <laughs> Susanna from Miami, Arye from the, uh, Miami, Johan from Switzerland, Yes, Bob, you, thank you. Alice asks a good question. What should women's studies include? Well, of course, those things that you need to fulfill. So the laws of Shabbos, a uh, woman has to fulfill, and, you know, um, and other, uh, other things, other areas. There's plenty of things that, uh, you know, a woman has a responsibility. You know, the holidays and so on. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, folks. Um, I, I'd like to mention something here. And um, I did, um, by the way, I got some uh, some uh, private messages of questions and so on. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to answer them. Um, uh, I try when I can. Um, but I do have a question. We have a month left, less than a month, until we finish this uh, cycle of Tanya. We've done this for a few years now. And I would need to have your feedback on what you would like for the forthcoming cycle. Continue in the same manner, continue in a different manner. Um, give me, I need feedback. Um, is there something different to do? Uh, even though I mentioned earlier and it is um, fresh for me every time, uh, although I might know it, but I just know it more deeply and, uh, and more, and there's always new, uh, nuances and uh, things that are, are um, novel. And the truth is, when you study the truth, then it's always um, inspiring and always fresh. So please, either, either you can, something short here, if you want to say something longer, you can say it here. Um, or private message me with your thoughts of what uh, uh, what, what what we should do. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing some things here just to mention. Chris says maybe a weekly uh, question and answer. Uh, Crystal is the ra the rabbi of this is a, 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 okay. Um, A 
Okay. I see great uh, responses. Okay, please continue responding. I really appreciate it. Uh, first of all, it's, it's encouraging. And secondly, it's, uh, it's insightful just to, to see, you know, what works for you guys. Okay. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zechen Kedesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. And please share with others. Have a wonderful day.